In our previous video, we looked at some quick and dirty ways to kind of explore what's happening with our data. And so we're going to dive into more exploratory data analysis in the next couple videos. What we're going through really is descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, and data visualization. And so if you've taken a course in statistics or some modules in those areas, you already know the basics, the theory. And so we're gonna focus here on application and coding in Python so that you can pull up the knowledge you already have uh, to do analysis in Python. So in our previous video, we looked at how to make cross tabs or pivot tables. So frequency tables to explore relationships between videos. We looked at correlation, a Spearman and Pearson product to look at the relationship between variables. Do they move in the same direction or opposite direction? If the number's closer to zero, there's less of a relationship. If the number's closer to one or negative one, uh, then we have more of a relationship. And we looked at some ways to get some summary data um, using describe uh, in Python. So the next couple of videos, we're going to look at descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, and data visualization. Really, what we want to know is what is appropriate for the type of data we have. So knowing your measurement scales is really important. What does it tell you? And of course, how do we do it in Python? So descriptive statistics are a summary of a data set from a subset of the population. So we take a survey and we've been looking at a bargaining survey, uh, people who are in a union. And so a subset of all the union members filled out the survey. So descriptive statistics describes them. Inferential statistics then tries to extrapolate to the greater population. So based on how this smaller group feels or what they told us, what do we know about the greater population? So we're trying to draw conclusions from the greater group. And then of course, data visualization is our charts and graphs uh, to help represent what's happening. And our ultimate goal is to create a dashboard where we can tell a story with the data. So that's where we're trying to go with our exploratory data analysis. So you already know that measures of central tendency include the mode, the most repeated number, the median, the number where half of the responses are above and below, and the mean, the average number. We want to make sure we remember, we recall from many stats courses you've taken that the mode is used when you have nominal, so categories, right? What's the most common category? Or we can use it with ordinal data. What's the most common rank? Median is used with ordinal data, so half the people uh, ranked above, half the people ranked below a certain level. Uh, or with interval or ratio data, where we can figure out what half of the counts or measures are below and above. And then with the mean, we're going to use that when we have interval or ratio data. We want to find the average. Uh, what we'll find is that Likert scale. So those are the survey questions where you strongly agree, strongly disagree. While it is ordinal data, it is often treated as if it is interval. And so uh, we can calculate the mean as well uh, with Likert scales. So let's dive in to our Python code. And just a reminder, like always, you can find the code at drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA. And we are now working in chapter five of the Business Intelligence and Analytics Handbook. And so we're working through the one called Descriptive Statistics. So click there. Of course, you need to open it in uh, Google Collab, so click on the button. Don't forget to log into your Google Drive, save a copy so you can edit uh, and save your code. We are going to be working through the Bargain Clean data set, which is what we've been using in the previous videos. If you don't have that Bargain Clean data set, it's right here. Uh, you'll need to save it to your Google Drive, and of course, then we'll reference it in our code to come grab it. If you are using a learning management system like Blackboard, then you can find that Excel spreadsheet posted there as well. All right, let's dive in. So the work we're gonna be doing as we look at measures of central tendency is going to require us to do some stats. And so we need the skippy.stats package and particularly the subset that is all of the stats ones. So stats is the group within Skippy and we're gonna call it stats for simplicity. 
We're also going to be manipulating and creating data tables, so we need to import pandas as PD. So we start off with the basic packages that we use all the time. The next thing we need to do is we need to link to our data set. So just a reminder that uh, you can mount your Google Drive. And I should have replaced this because we're just doing this here. And so you're going to mount to your Google Drive. So just enter this code in as you see it. You just leave it exactly how it is. It's going to ask you if it has permissions to connect to your Google Drive. Nobody else is connecting to your Google Drive, just you. Uh, so this is so you have access to your spreadsheets. And then we need to tell it where your spreadsheet is located. My spreadsheet is located in a folder called BIBA Handbook and a folder inside that called Chapter 4. Uh, and then the name of the file is Bargain Clean. So this first part here is going to be exactly the same for you. And then you're just going to change this back end depending on where you put your Excel spreadsheet. So we need to load up our data set. All right, we talked in previous episodes or previous episodes, previous videos, uh, how we can look at our table. So once we load it in, we want to preview it. So we can use the command head. And if you specify a number in the parentheses, it says how many rows. The default is five, so if you leave it empty, it'll do five. Otherwise, you put a number in. The DF part is the name we gave to our table. So these are data frames, and so common language in coding is to call your data frame DF. All right, you can call it whatever you want. But whatever you're calling your table, dot head tells us to find the head of that table. And so you can see here we have our first four rows. Again, Python starts with zero in its counting. So we have zero, one, two, three. And we can see that for some of our data, we have it coded. And for others, we have here the non-coded version, right? So here this is um, for question two, it was part-time or full-time. And the question one was priorities. You can see this is not coded in this version. Uh, we coded in our previous videos, uh, but we're going to look at how you can do some analysis with coded and with non-coded versions. So the first thing we want to talk about as we talk about measures of central tendency is that if we're going to calculate the mode, the most common, we need to find frequency. We want it to count how many times certain things occur. And we can do this in Python with a variable that has not been coded. So for example, question two was part-time or full-time. So the command here is value counts. We're applying it to our table we call df, and we specify the column. The column was question two. So when we run this, it then gives us the value counts, how many were full-time in our survey, 43, and how many said part-time, 20, okay? We can turn this into a percentage by adding the command here, normalize equals true. So by doing normalize equals true, it's dividing by the total. And so you can see, same command, we just add normalize equals true. And you can see here that 68% are full-time and 32% are part-time. If you want to try out a different variable, right, all we have to do, add a line of code here, same command, df value counts. And then we just need to specify what question we're looking at. So if we're doing question one, for example, we can see that 20 people put increasing pay, 19 put improving working conditions, 14 improved benefits, 10 job security. And if you want to turn that into percentages, we do normalize equals true. And you can see that the most popular priority is higher pay. Okay. Now, if we switch to our coded data set, we can uh, look at it as well. So hopefully you have it in the same location as you have your, uh, your other data set, your bargain clean. And so we can then pull it. Again, it's an Excel file, so it's read Excel and you just need to specify the location where you're pulling it from. So again, everyone has up to the My Drive part, and then it's simply the name of the folder, and if it's inside another folder, and then the name of the file. 
So here we're loading up this clean, this uh, coded version, and you can see the coded version with our head command. And so you can see this one has it coded question one instead of being words is numbers. Question two instead of part time and full time is numbers as well. We can, if we have a table that is all coded. So remember in our previous video, we separated out the quantitative and then the qualitative. And so we have this table, which is this one you see here, which is all coded. So every column that's in here is a number. If you have that scenario where all the columns are numbers, then you can do things like have it count up how many are in each, how many ones, how many twos, how many threes, uh, and so you can do it for the whole table. So what we're gonna do is use value counts, that's that same command that we had here, value counts, but instead of doing it for one particular variable, we can apply it to the whole table. So we have our second table here called DF2, which is all numbers. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to apply to DF2 value counts. And so what we have here, df2.apply, parentheses, df2.value counts. When you do this, what it does is it creates, so it takes all the numbers. And the challenge we have here is that that first column, the respondents, went up to 63. So what you'll notice here is that it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 63. And for the respondents, of course, there's one number one, there's one number two, because there's one person in each of those numbers. That's not relevant, we don't care about that. But we can see quick at a glance for question two, which was the part-time, full-time, there are two people who were coded as one, and, sorry, there were 20 people who were coded as one, and 43 who were coded as two. Question three, had multiple, if we go in, we can actually look at question three. So I'm just gonna go to our survey here. Question three was the Likert scale, had five options. And so if we go here, we can see for question three, two, 14, 10, 16, and we can show the rest of the table if we want. We can cut off these last couple rows. Uh, before we do that though, uh, let's turn them all into percentages. So let's add the normalize equals true. Okay. And then we want to condense the table. So we don't need all this bottom half here. And in fact, except for the respondent, the rest of the variables don't exceed seven. Um, except for question 24 in its original form, which asks how many years. I think we had people up to like 24. So we can take this table and make it a little easier to look at so that we can do a quick scan through our data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new table. We'll just call it purse for percentages. You can call it whatever you want, but it is going to be applying those value counts and it is going to find the percentages. So it's essentially the exact same thing we did here, only that we just named it. Okay, so if you named it before, it's already done. But we have to give it a name here because we need to then amend it. And we're going to amend it by adjusting what it calls the tail. So what we wanna do is we wanna cut off everything that isn't relevant, okay? And so if we run this here, We are cutting off a bunch of this irrelevant section. Okay. Now, the first thing we did here is that with taking off the tail, the first thing we're doing is removing the row of zeros. Okay, so this here is removing the row of zeros. That's this command here, tail, because this, the zero part, that first row is, is the tail. And so we are, the negative one just takes away one. So we're taking away that first row of zeros with that command here that says tail applied to our table that is the percentages. And then the next part here is we're only showing the first seven rows. There's, the rest of the table is still there. 
If actually, if I had changed this to not say head, but just say here, then you can see the remaining rows still exist. So if I decide I wanna see more than seven, for example, question 24, where it had uh, a lot more than seven, they're still there. I'm simply just showing the first seven. And that way, at a quick glance, I can take this table and I can scan through. So I can see here for question two, more uh, full-time than part-time. I can see for question three that people are slightly on the dissatisfied side because remember, it is Likert scale, higher number, better. You can see people are kind of in the middle. Oh, I guess it's not really skewed towards the lower end. Uh, it is pretty much equal, right? And then question 4A is, if we go back and look at, we can see which healthcare benefits to prioritize. Looks like nobody answered um, number four. So one, two, three, chiropractic care. Not a priority for anyone in our survey then. So we can see then for number four though, the top priority is six and one. And so we can see that's the wellness account and that is the drug coverage. So this allows you at a quick glance to go through and we could look at all these different ones here. Question 23 is location. There are three campuses and we can see here that it's not too bad in terms of distribution across the three campuses. It's about a third, a third, a third in terms of our respondents. So by doing this, by summarizing into a frequency table that hits the percentages, we can get the mode because we can see what's the most common response for each question, but we can also do quick exploratory data to see what's happening with the different questions um, all at once, okay? Now, if you wanna find the mode itself, then uh, we can use the original data set to find the mode. And so we'll go back to DF. And the reason we're switching between DF and DF2 is DF2 is the coded one. DF is the one that is got some of the nominal uh, responses, the categories are written out as strings, as text. And so I wanna show you that you can do things with the different versions. So you can decide if you're gonna code, when you're gonna code, uh, how much you're gonna code. So we're gonna do the mode and we're gonna use the original data set DF. Uh, an axis equals zero when you're doing the mode is found for each column. Axis equals one would give the mode by row. Well, we don't want mode by row because we don't care what the most common response is for respondent one, because these are very different questions. So all we really care about is the axis equals zero for our columns. So when we do mode, we can apply mode to our DF table, axis equals zero. Now you can choose here whether you're gonna do numeric only. If you do numeric only, then it's going to ignore the columns that have text. Now what you do wanna do is do drop NA equals true. And this will then ignore the missing data uh, because that creates issues in terms of trying to find the most common response. So if we run this here, we find the mode for each All right, what do we got here? df.mode axis equals zero. Make sure I'm going here. Yeah, so you can see that's not what we want. All right, why are we not finding the mode for each? Okay, so what we have here, you notice there's a bunch of rows that are all NAN. And that's because when you get to question 21 in the uncoded data set where there's write-in answers, there are lots of different answers that appear one time. And so the mode is the answer that has the most frequency, the most counts. And so there's a big tie here. And so because of this big tie, we have all these extra rows uh, that for everything else are NAN. You can of course make this all disappear.
air. So if we just streamline it down, because we recognize that those open-ended questions have, we don't really care about the mode for them, then uh, we can look at them here. So what we see here is that the most common for question one is increasing pay, for question two is full time. The most common response for question three is a four. So most people are pretty satisfied with their benefits. What they would like to see the most increase of is drug coverage and so on. We can go through the data set. So you can find the mode with your uncoded data by doing numeric only equals false. If we want to do it from our coded data, so DF2, then what we're doing is we're doing DF2.mode axis equals zero, numeric only equals true. Now in the DF2, all of our columns should be numeric only. Um, if you did this numeric only true in the original data set, then question one, it would just give you nothing. So numeric only equals false if it's not fully coded. Numeric only equals true is fine um, if it is a coded data set or if you don't want to see those ones that are in nominal form. So the, when we do this here, and I'm just going to pull this out for a second. So we can take our mode and we could even simplify this. It doesn't have to be two rows with renaming. We could just do it like this, just like we did before. Okay. So if you do it this way, what I want to point out to you is DF2 mode one or whatever you call it. Okay. Here we have our information and it is going across. So we can see for question one, uh, number five was the top priority. Question two, full time was the most. Four out of the five scale for benefits. Number six, right, which was dental care. Uh, we can see the modes here. What I have in this original code is to transpose it. And if I just put it back, all I had was I had moved this head as a separate. Um, and you don't have to do this. You could do it all in one command um, up to you. So what I did is I said, OK, let's create a table called DF2 mode one by finding the modes and then call it DF2 mode two when you just take the row, first row. And then this command here is transpose. So if you want to turn it from being a bunch of rows to being a column. All right, now I got to figure out where I screwed it up. Uh, DF2 mode two, DF2 mode one. Now let's just put it back there, head one. So what I've done here is I've converted it. So now we have a list of modes and we have our list of variables. So you can show it, you can change the orientation of the table if you want uh, by using that T or transpose. You can of course find the mode for just one variable. And to do that, very simple, you take your table, DF1 or DF2, say, Question two, we want the mode of, and just do dot mode, and then we get the number here that it's two. So this is index zero, that's just the, what row you are looking at, and there's only one row if you're providing the mode. We could, let's do it here, df. And if we do it from the original table, df, you can see that the mode for just one variable for Q2 is uh, full time. 